Good morning everyone, my name is Rahul Kumar and today I'm going to be conducting a workshop on how to build a facial tracking system using OpenCV. So let's get started. The first thing we're going to talk about is facial recognition, how it was introduced and how it is being used right now. We're going to go through some basics of an OpenCV, I'm going to show you how you can install OpenCV. I'm going to take it for a test drive, try out a few simple codes with it. Next, we're gonna build up a circuit. The circuit consists of a few so two servo motors and a camera. The servo motors move in order to align as my face moves, basically. Then we're gonna create a code for communicating between our Arduino and a Python. And finally, we'll be coding our facial tracking system after we build the entire circuit. So what is facial recognition? So what makes the entirety of a human face are certain features that are really used to help with facial recognition. That counts your eyes, your nose, your jawline, and your lips. There are other features that are also seen, like the placement of these particular features. It kind of helps us associate with what makes the face and helps us create algorithms to create systems that could help us build it. So a little bit of history lesson for you guys. Uh, so Woodrow Wilson Blade Russo was known as one of the founders of um, uh, facial recognition technologies. He created a system that would that would use manual uh, uh, algorithms or instructions of the positions of your your facial features, such as your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your mouth. And it's also been previously used in um, uh, FBI slash criminal based systems to recognize people based on their mugshots. How facial recognition is used today is some of the major examples are facial motion track capture systems where you have dots on your face and an infrared camera that locates these dots and a character model is developed so that it in, in, in wraps around your face. So whenever you emote the character model's face changes as well, movement changes as well. It's used in smartphones as well as a security measure with the other biometric systems, so settings. And it's also used in social media to help you tag along in certain photos, help you tag in certain photos. So it's really easy to detect uh, where a face is located and tag a certain person. So what is OpenCV? OpenCV is nothing but an open source computer vision library, which is used for performing real-time computer vision applications. So uh, a lot of these tend to be facial tracking, facial detection, motion detection, and all that. And it has a lot of support, so you can use it in C++ codes, and Python, with Java, and in a wide array, uh, array of different platforms as well, Windows, Linux, Mac OS, iOS, and Android. Uh, basically, we'll be using OpenCV for facial tracking, and we'll go from there. So basically, when we move our face, the tracking system works along as our, as our face turns. Um, we're gonna be installing uh, Python using, uh, Python and OpenCV using Anaconda. So here's a guide uh, that you can follow. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna install um, these. So let's get started. I'm gonna copy this link right here, paste it. And as you can see, there is, it'll tell you about system requirements, all of that. Anaconda is a good package manager for Python, so it's very easy to use. We're gonna be installing for Windows. There are other ways to install it as well. My system's running a Windows, so um, you can use these commands to run it. This is for Macs, for Linux. So you can use Anaconda using Linux. We go back to Mac and you uh, go to the Windows installer, Anaconda installer for Windows. You press download. Okay, looks like it's back to this page. Let's go down. Yep, so make sure you install Python 3.7 version based on your graphical installer. So if it's a 64-bit system, install the 64-bit variant of it and save it. Now I'm just gonna cancel it since I already have Anaconda in my system. So cancel it. Make sure to install the 3.7 variant. So let's type Anaconda Navigator. So the Navigator comes in 
um, with the command shell window as well so all of your installations can be done either through the navigator which is a very simplistic looking user interface it takes a bit of time to install uh, to initialize and open up packages or you can use the command shell that comes with the uh, anaconda which is called anaconda prompt uh, to install libraries to enable the IDE if you want and all that so let's go okay warning message you can just skip that so as you can see there are a lot of different applications here you have Jupyter Labs Notebook Spider Orange R Studio R Studio is one of the more crazier ones because you can use R with Anaconda as well a good package manager so what we're going to do first is that we're going to create a virtual environment in this case I will call it facial tracking and make sure that you select Python 3.6 the 3.6 variant because OpenCV tends to work better with that one the newer versions don't have an updated one so there are some problems with the libraries when you install them uh, you can also see right over here you have a list of all the libraries so there's an alternative way to install libraries as well using the navigator but I find it much more easier to install libraries using um, the command prompt or the shell. So we'll do that. As you can see, there are different libraries that are being installed down here. So you have pip, python, a lot of these which are basically come in with installing python onto your system. So Anaconda Navigator takes care of all the python-like packages. It's, very, it's a very good uh, way to uh, work with Python because if you want to dis... Um, and also with creating a virtual environment since it's very easy to remove it and organize your project based on that. So we're going to open the terminal first. Let's go to our location. So you can see, we'll press Python. You can see the version that we have, which is 3.6.10. I'm going to type exit to get out of the shell. The next thing that we're going to do is gonna go back to our slides so we're gonna open uh, we're gonna install OpenCV first so pip install OpenCV I'm gonna just copy this link right over here and here it tells you exactly what I mentioned on the slide itself you can install a specific specific version of OpenCV if you want but it would be easier to install it just type in pip install OpenCV hyphen Python and enter and that will install all the prerequisites for you in this case it'll install OpenCV and NumPy um, usually uh, if you have a prepackaged version of Python that has not been installed by Anaconda or isn't exactly um, built in a virtual environment something from scratch uh, NumPy always comes in with that so you don't have to worry about that so anyway it's installing OpenCV and installing NumPy which is usually a, a Python package used to do calculations, mathematical calculations. Okay, so collecting packages, looks like we're doing good. Okay, so it's installed specific versions, 1.18.2 for NumPy and OpenCV. So next we're gonna type in Python, enter. We're gonna import these packages. So in this case, I open C, uh, import CV2. Then we're going to check the version of CV2 just to make sure if we have the right version in our case. So CV2 dot underscore underscore version. And as you see, we have the 4.2.0 2.0 variant of CV to open CV. Just to ensure that we've installed open CV properly and the correct variant for our case. As you can see, I have a slide right over here where we just followed up with what I just did. Now we're going to work with some open CV basics. So let's go to where my folder is located. Okay, so I have a code called OpenCV underscore video dot pi. I'm gonna just go through that and show you what I've done. Okay. So as you can see, certain things, first thing we're gonna do is import NumPy. 
although we're not really using NumPy that much, we just want to show you that you can import it as well. We're going to be importing CV2. Then next thing we'll be doing is CV2 dot video capture, which enables us to capture a certain video input. In this case, I have a webcam, so we're going to keep it as zero. A red frame cap read would start the window initiating. I am sure we'll show you the frame and then cap release will close it once you're done. So next thing we're going to do is go to the desktop, go to my location for this particular file and then Python and the name of the file, which is opencv underscore video dot pi. And we're going to run it. Do you see my face pop up eventually? Okay, so that's about it. Now let's go back to our slides. Okay. So the Arduino Uno, it's a simple microcontroller board as you can see, very versatile for a lot of different kind of pro projects, hardware projects in specific that uses high power. As you can see, there are a few digital PWM pins right over here. And on the other end, we have some analog pins. Analog input is usually more variant. And then we have some pins that provide power, five volts ground just to power up the system. You have a USB B port right over here, which is used as with the cable to upload the code and to provide power. And you also have an external battery to power it up as well. So servo motor, pretty simple. It's just a standard motor that moves based on pulse width modulation. So pulse width modulation is basically a standard signal that gives you, um, uh, that basically helps you output a certain angle. So if you have your PWM set as zero, it'll, uh, your servo is going to be set up to zero degrees. If you have it set up to uh, high, which in this case, I think it's 180, it'll be set to 180 degrees. You can see there are a lot of different uses for servo motors. It's, it's a very versatile motor in general. So let's go. So here is the assembly of the circuit. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Um, so we have one of the servers, which is going to be like a base servo uh, connecting power and ground for both of the servers. Servo 1 goes to uh, pin number 10 on the Arduino, which is the base servo. And uh, the top servo sits on uh, pin number 9 of the Arduino. So here is a little bit of assembly. We've got the Arduino Uno, got a breadboard. We've got a mount, and as you can see, there are servos stacked on top of each other, one for moving X, one for moving Y in the Y axis. We've got a webcam that will be mounting on top of the mount. We've got our jumper cables, and we've got our data cable that we will be using. So first things first, we're gonna we're gonna connect the power for our system. First, we're gonna connect ground, which will be the GND pin on your Arduino, to the breadboard. Next, we'll be connecting uh, the five volt pin to the positive rail. So you can see there are two different rails. Uh, there's a negative rail where we've connected the ground, and the positive rail where we've connected power, which is five volts. We have a servo mount right over here. And this is kind of a elaborate, not so elaborate process. You see three cables, just as similar to the circuit diagram. We have the brown, which is usually grounded. Next, we have the red cable, which we're gonna give power to, so that'll be connected to the five volt red rail on your uh, breadboard. 
deuxième. And finally, we're gonna connect it to the yellow cable, which is used for data. Gonna connect it to pin number nine. So this is for the top motor. Now for the bottom motor, the base motor that you see right there, which rotate around the y-axis. We're gonna do the exact same process. So first things first, I'm gonna connect the ground, connect it to the base. Gonna take the power, connect it to the red rail on the breadboard. And finally, the data pin and we're going to connect it to pin number 10 on the Arduino, digital pin number 10, simple. Next thing, we're going to remove the sticky tape that I've placed underneath the webcam so you can easily place it on top of the motor rig. The motor rig is 3D printed so it's very easy to paste um, any, any sort of adhesive on top. So this is just to ensure that the webcam stays in place. So I'm just going to give it a squish and there we go. Simple, pretty simple. So let's get back to it. So once you're done with the circuit, next things that we're going to, next thing that we're going to look at is the basic circuit code. So we're gonna teach you how to install PySerial. The PySerial library is basically to initiate a communication between your Python code and your Arduino. Installation process is pretty easy. You can either use uh, by any three of these commands to install it directly. Um, this is Python hyphen M, Conda, Conda install. Conda is the package manager for um, Anaconda, so if you want to install any three, anything through Conda instead of doing it through pip, you can even use Conda. The PySerial library is basically a communication gateway between the Python and Arduino. It's just so that the Python code can talk to the Arduino code. And basically whenever there is, whenever my face moves in any of the directions, for example, if I'm turning left or right, the Python code tells it to the Arduino to adjust the rig so that once my face moves the rig adjusts with it too. So we're going to just test this out. Import serial, serial underscore underscore version just to see if our um, library has been installed correctly. Seems like it's fine. So next things next. Okay, so let me just go over a simple serial code just to see how the communication module works. So I'm going to open up the Arduino serial example that you see right over here. Okay, that was a simple issue. Let's fix that and let's open it up. Okay, so as you can see, it's a pretty straightforward code. Uh, we have a setups uh, function set up right over here. This is to initialize our serial. Uh, this is, okay, so first, the thing that we're gonna trigger is the built-in LED pin on the Arduino, which is pin number 13. Um, we're gonna set it to low. We're gonna initialize it to serial read under the loop. Whenever uh, Python sends one, our LED will turn on on the board, the onboard LED will turn on. And whenever it's on zero, the onboard LED will turn off. Okay, let's make sure that our Arduino is whichever one that we're using, which is one in this case, and the COM port that you selected is, keep the note of your COM port. We're gonna compile it and upload it. Okay, next, just gonna clear up the window and we're gonna run 
this particular code first thing we're going to do is import serial import it successfully now next things next we're gonna just initialize serial from python side make sure to select the right com in our case it's com13 so serial.serial .serial, select the com and select the baud rate in this case 9600 similar to the one that you're using on the arduino then we're going to write a certain command in this case serial.write one so basically when you send one the led pin should turn high encode is just to ensure that it sends it enter so as you can see the led turns on the onboard led the orange light that you see turns on and now we're just going to do the opposite just to show, show you that it turns off as well close it zero enter one is just to ensure a return value so it actually successfully um, establishes it and as you can see that works too turns the led off on the board okay so we're just gonna exit out of python gonna get back to the slides okay so we basically done this now let's go back and just going to show you close close this just going to show you this 3d printed design folder just to show you what the pieces that i've printed look like the the basis of it yeah, these are named incorrectly but this is the top piece the one that makes it move around the x-axis i guess and this is the bottom piece the both of them are mounted with a servo on top on top uh, on the base the one is on the base the other one's on the side and this is just to ensure that one of the motors moves in the x direction and the other one moves in the y direction let's go back so we're gonna run um, as you can see there are two um, hard cascaded filters here this is to ensure that we have two filters that the XML code of course uh, so we have one for a frontal face which makes sure that we captures it captures our frontal face and one is for profile so it gets a side shot uh, we're gonna run the final code this should give you an idea about what the code is about uh, you can see there's a library that we've included here which we haven't installed so I'm gonna show you how we're gonna do that so um, it's war speed servo.h just gonna go to any of your browser search up this particular library to install it so var speed servo.h enter and there's yeah this is the right library right over here you can download it download it as a zip make sure you download it as a zip and this will install it in a certain folder as you can see i already have it installed i'm just going to cancel it next thing you do is just go to your downloads copy the file that you have right here var speed servo we're gonna go to arduino right click on arduino open file location so we're basically going to the libraries folder same thing right click open file location and you can see there is a libraries folder right there and we're just gonna drop this zip file right over here drag drop continue to give administrator rights you right click and you extract the folder right here i i already have the uh, library installed so i'm not going to do it again <coughs> as you can see varspeed.servo underscore master already have it that's it once you've extracted it you have it uh, just to make sure you close any of your arduino ides that you have just to sh just to make sure that the library is going to be initialized properly so we're just going to close this going to go here run the code again open the code again so the library has been successfully included so before we go through the arduino code let's go through the python code first these codes kind of play off of each other so a lot of the input that you're getting from python is coming into arduino itself so let's go we go back and code.py is the script our final script for the facial tracking algorithm and 
code. Uh, so first things first, obviously we're going to be importing our libraries. CV2 is the OpenCV library. Serial, I've seen, as we've seen before, is the library that we're going to use to communicate between Python and Arduino. Uh, NumPy is just a library that's used for calculations. In our case, we're going to be using it for um, storing um, certain values inside an array. We'll see as we go through the code. Um, so first things first, we're going to define a resolution for our frame. So in this case, um, first thing that the first input that it takes is cap, which is the video capture that we're going to do. As you see, I've chosen one. Uh, that is specifically because I don't want to use my on uh, my onboard camera, so my laptop camera. Instead, I'm going to be using the camera that we've attached on top of the servo rig. Um, then we're going to set the frame width and the frame height. Um, once once I run the first bit of the code, you'll kind of see what the frame resolution is. So in our case, we have the we're setting the frame width as 640 pixels and we're setting the frame height as 480 pixels. Uh, next, we're going to be passing this down through this particular function that we've created. So our video capture input, the width and the height. Uh, next thing that we're going to do is we're going to input the um, cas uh, the har cascade. Uh, so if you see right here, we have I've I've imported two uh, har cascades here. Uh, one is a frontal face capture and the other one is a profile face capture. So this har cascade is basically a trained model. Uh, it's been trained in a specific way. You don't have to know the details about how it's trained, but it basically is an XML format of how um, uh, it's trained. So there's positive images and negative images. It's trained to basically look for the frontal face feature for this particular XML code. And for this particular XML code, it's known to look for the profile face, right? As we discussed. Um, so uh, in this case, we're just going to be capturing uh, the frontal face, um, uh, the frontal face heart cascade. If you want, you can implement the uh, profile face um, cascade as well, but uh, it'll just add to the complexity. So we'll just strain away from doing that. Uh, next thing we're going to do, of course, this is what we do traditionally with OpenCV. We're going to be capturing, so we're going to start the reading process. Basically, our frames are going to be generated frame, uh, uh, picture by picture, thereby creating a video. And we're going to read it. So the first thing that we're going to run is um, we're going to show what the original frame looks like when you do the uh, red frame capture read, and it's going to start reading. All right, so let's go here. So Python code.py. First things we're going to see is, of course, my face. Now you can see that this isn't exactly the right frame. It has to be flipped so it kind of uh, plays off of that. So now we're going to, I'm going to, uh, the reason why we're doing this is because um, right now it's kind of mirrored our frame. So we're just going to run this and you guys can see the difference. Oh, running that as well. Okay, before that, let me just comment out the final, um, the final. I am sure. Okay, let's comment that. So you see, this is what the original looks like. You see, my the the original is kind of not exactly in the right dimension. It's kind of mirroring. It's more of a mirroring effect. So what we're doing with the flipped is that we're creating it so that the camera kind of syncs up with what I'm doing in real life, basically. The first thing we're going to do is just going to flip the image. All right, we're going to comment that. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to encapsulate the frame and basically turn it from a colored image slash video to grayscale. So basically, uh, when it comes to grayscale, the complexity of the image decreases. So you're just working with a certain set of pixels. You're working with a pixel that is dark, 
uh, or white and everything in between so black and white so you you'd kind of uh, you kind of reduce the complexity of the image when when we're converting it into grayscale so i'll just show you what it looks like when it's grayscale as well so you can see the difference between the images i'll comment so two run the code and you can see we're just working with black and white um colors okay so now we're going to start the process of putting these um, inputs in in array okay uh, so you can see that we've used um, uh, this detect multi scale uh, lib um, a function from a specific library um, this is to read from the face cascade in this case which is which we've just classified it as the har cascade uh, so what it's going to do is going to read gray images so it's just going to be taking the input uh, we we equated our frame to turning into grayscale and that's going to be what it's going to be read uh, this this particular values are going to remain constant uh, again uh, things like scale factor minimum neighbors and minimum size these just add to the complexity so we're not going to discuss these much in detail but these values can also be changed based on um, on what you want to see exactly so uh, you can have a look at this particular function and you can check out what the scale factor the minimum neighbors and the minimum size um, means so uh, the next thing that we're going to do of course is for the facial tracking process itself we need to make sure that we before that let me just comment these two bits out okay for the uh, facial tracking part itself we need to make sure that we are uh, you know encapsulating the face and to do that we make sure that we are drawing a rectangle around our face so uh, uh, we need to set the dimensions for the rectangle uh, so we've created a loop right over here which creates that so cv2.rectangle again is the function um, we're going to import the frame uh, X and Y is going to be our starting point. For example, if the frame is, in this case, the frame is a rectangle, there's going to be a starting point which is X and Y, and the end point which is X plus width, X plus height, mm, width and height. So we're going to encapsulate those two inputs. Um, then uh, we're going to just make sure that the, again, this is just to make sure that your the color of your outline of, of the rectangle, the border of the rectangle itself is a specific one. So we've chosen red in this case and two is the thickness so before we go into this particular bit i'm just going to show you what the frame looks like when uh, when the rectangle is on there which you kind of had a sneak peek before so you can see oh it's not red my bad sorry bgr so it's green um so you see that when i move my face it starts to read where my face is at and it draws a rectangle around. So if I go back and the hard cascade XML works the way it does, it can capture certain features and just recognize it as a face. So if I were to hide half of my face, you see that sometimes the rectangle shows up and sometimes it doesn't. So that's just to show that the hard cascade works as it's supposed to and it shows up whenever your face is detected on a frame right so now this uh, this function this uh, if statement right over here is basically um, um, what we're going to be sending to arduino itself so uh, you've seen that i have kind of blocked out some of the serial ports because i'm not ready to send anything to the arduino yet so what we're going to do i'm going to do is that first things first where if i in faces so whatever if all the features in faces uh the face center x the first thing that we're going to find is the center value of the frame so what we're going to do is i'll just remove this print function uh, print function to see what what is exactly in this um in this faces array all right all right so you can see there are four values being printed out in the in the faces array. Okay, let me close that. So if you see, if I turn a certain way, 
a particular value drops. So this is the x value. And if I go in the opposite direction, it kind of increases. Right? Now if I were to go down, the opposite happens. So the y value changes. Right? You also see that these values also change. This corresponds to, like, the first value corresponds to the entrance of the first line of the axis, which is the x, and the other one corresponds to x plus the width, like you've seen what we printed out there. And uh, the second value is the y, and then y plus the height. So we're just trying to get those values from the array. Now to find the center of the face or the center of that rectangle, we're just going to take those values and divide it by two, basically just getting this, this, center, this and this, center of x-axis, center of y-axis. So we know where those particular points are. So it's basically to limit our values and make it so that it's easy to understand when it comes to Arduino, from the Arduino side. So we're just going to comment this out. Now you see that the values are, uh, when, when if I were to print out face center x and face center y, the values are pretty extreme. They're, they go from 100 to 200. So I've we've created this equation right over here, which kind of limits the value and makes it so that the center of the uh, center of my face on, on the camera itself is detected as zero. And uh, if I were to move in a certain way, your limiter would be somewhere between minus 20 and 0, and then 0 and 20 in both the x and y directions. So you've seen that what we've done over here is basically subtracted from the frame width, uh, divided by 2 because, again, it's the center of the face, and we're dividing it by the frame. So basically just eliminating whatever input the frame gives you. Same thing we're do doing with, uh, um, with the uh, y as well. So now if you were to see the uh, what the error values look like, it kind of makes sense. So I'm just going to run the code again. And I see that if I were in the center or somewhere close to the center, the value stays between 0. Again, uh, if I were to go on the left-hand side, it goes to the negative value for x. And if I were to go down, it goes to the positive value on y. If I were to go up, it goes to the negative value of y. And if I were to go on uh, um, on the right-hand side, the x value goes to positive. This is just to ensure that uh, the readings are much more flexible and we don't have to change um, a lot from the Arduino side. And we're basically minimizing the complexity of what we're getting from the original input. So this, with this, it'll be easier to understand the Arduino code. So this is basically the input that we're sending to the Arduino code. We're sending uh, where the position of the face is. And if you were to turn a certain way, the servo aligns it and kind of adjusts it to the center of the face. So once the face is centered, you'll get a value somewhere between 0. Usually, I've set the range to minus 2 and 2. So if, you're, if, if the value is somewhere between minus 2 to 2 in both the x and the y direction, the, uh, the, the servo mount doesn't move. But if it, is, um, if it sways away from that value, either in the negative direction or in the positive direction on either sides, it kind of corrects it. So that's it for the Python code. Again, if you press Control C, it kind of breaks from the uh, from the uh, if statement and the loop that it's stuck in, which is the while true loop, and it breaks the uh, cap the Windows capture and it destroys anything any of these OpenCV windows. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep this print statement and we're gonna uncomment all of the serial values. You see that uh, when you do the serial, right, okay, let me remove this as well. So over here, we're initializing uh, our serial input. So if it's not, if your com is not 13, in my case, it is. I change that to uh, whatever your com value is. And uh, that's the baud rate that we're using. You can vary between uh, 250,000 or 9,600. Um, and the serial write is basically going to be the value that we get over here, sending it as string. And this is just to recognize it as an x value and error y as y value. We're encoding it and then sending it to serial write. If, um, um, 
if nothing else is sent over here basically if the face is not being tracked it's just gonna send oh um oh exclamation point basically don't change anything let the uh let the servos just rest so we're just gonna do that i'm gonna close uh, save this as well so we're done with the python part now with the arduino part as you can see we just imported uh we just included the library which we uh which i showed you how to import earlier um this is just to initialize our server so we're using two servers one for the base and uh, one for the base so it moves along the x-axis and one for the y so we know it moves around the y-axis uh, the string is going to be the input string so what we're going to get from python um, so instead uh, under the white setup we're just going to initialize where uh, which pin our arduino uh, sorry our servos are attached to so one of the servos is attached to pin number nine the other is attached to pin number ten uh, we're gonna we're gonna just mention the baud rate and again you don't have to worry about the print statement because we're not going to be using the serial monitor um, because we are um, uh, we are sending serial values from uh, the from python to the to arduino opening the serial monitor won't really work out for you so make sure that you don't open the serial monitor and just upload the code as is so the first thing you do is upload the uh, arduino code and then we'll upload the python code uh, so here's the while loop so you can see we mentioned velocity position uh, we're gonna read it until you get to the exclamation point and not read from there so all, as you saw in our Python script all of the inputs that are coming there end with an exclamation point so X Y and O so basically that's what we're trying to tell you do not read un after it comes to the exclamation point um, now we're going to show that if it ends, uh, if your string ends with an X, what you're going to do is that if the value is greater than two, you're going to move it. Uh, so your your range is going to be somewhere between 180 and the well. So well is basically uh, the initial velocity that is uh, that we said, not velocity per se. It's basically the position of the uh, servo itself. So um, if it's constant, it's going to stay at zero um so basically that'll be our range from 180 to wherever our middle ground is so for our case it's going to be zero um and if uh else if if the well the value or the velocity is greater than um greater than minus two sorry less than minus two so any of the values that are less than minus two onwards it's going to move in the opposite direction this is basically to to convey that if it's in a certain uh if it's in the if it's if if your face is located on the right hand side it's gonna correct it so that the position of the servo aligns your face with the um with the camera or else not so um else if it's if it's not in the valley so if it's not two or if it's not minus two for example that's the range that we said as i discussed earlier it's just gonna stay as is it's gonna stay still same thing with y right now right over here is where we're mentioning with o when there's nothing being de detected we're just gonna set a counter right and this if it continuously doesn't detect anything and the counter reaches somewhere around 100 counts it's just gonna set the position of a servo in a certain way this is basically like an idle mode that we're setting for this case or else if, if it's not happening and if it's in this particular if statement uh, it's just gonna uh, uh, if, if the count isn't reached it's just gonna keep the position as is and the last thing that we're gonna do is like set the input string so whenever the input is captured it's just gonna be reading it constantly so we're just gonna verify it when it's check if our board and port is right yep looks like it's fine and we're finally gonna upload it all right so it's uploaded
so as you saw um, there was a problem in the beginning where the mount kind of fell so I had to adjust it so you saw me pushing my face up and down just to kind of align it and adjust the mount um, so after adjusting the mount uh, it started tracking my face right so as it tracked my face it kind of moved in a certain way based on where my face was just to make sure that my face stays in the center of the frame or somewhere in that minus two to two range in both the x and y direction so if it detects that it's just going to keep your uh, keep the servo still and the frame constant um, if you move your frame a certain way the servos are just going to align and fix it up in a certain way so uh, this is it for the workshop today um, we've covered up a lot of different topics we we went through some open cv basics we went through how serial communication works in a simple way and um, we also went through how the um, the whole thing works in general with uh, initially Pyth using python using open cv you start the tracking process uh, with the facial tracking heart cascades um, and uh, you kind of finish it off with those values being sent from Python to the Arduino IDE constantly so that the servos correct um, uh, the movement or the position of the um, the position of the frame when it's, it's when your face is out of the frame basically so yeah uh, I know this is a bit of a complicated topic but um, I try to simplify it and it's, it's it's very simple when you look into the gist of it uh, all the codes uh, will be shared on our github repository so you can definitely have a look at it there um, so I'll be closing it off thank you very much um, and I hope you have a good day